My name is Margaret Heffernan. I've run five businesses in the US and the UK, and now I write about business. I think for me, the new normal incorporates respect for the very significant talents that women bring to the business environment. And the new normal has to figure out how to recruit, retain, and really get the greatest advantage from a highly diverse workforce. Well, I think the thing about diversity is people tend to think, oh God, this is political correctness. It means we have to hire certain kinds of people. The implication being we can't hire the kind of people we want, and oh my goodness, it's such a pain. The reality is you need to hire a diverse workforce for two reasons. One is there's not enough talent around. You can't afford to turn your back on 50% of the talent pool. And these days, frankly, women are taking the bulk of degrees and higher degrees and so on. So you can't afford to turn your back on that. But furthermore, if you build a business that is full of diverse thinking styles and working styles, you are more agile, you are more able to conceive multiple solutions to the problems that you face. So the more diverse your workforce, I would argue, the more intellig intelligent and capable your business. I think the key issue is partly that a huge amount of talent is leaving traditional corporations to start their own businesses. These businesses are more successful than business on average. They grow faster, they're more profitable, they create more jobs. So that is demonstrable, palpable talent, business talent, that companies are losing. Nobody can afford to do that no matter what gender it is. That's a fact. The second issue is the demographics, which means we're not going to have enough talent anyway. Third issue is that you know, it isn't just women. Families have mothers and fathers, and fathers want to spend time with their kids too. Furthermore, smart men marry smart women, and nobody wants to be lumbered with 100% of the childcare. Both parents want to be part of it. And so the issue that companies have to confront is as I have more and more demanding employees who require the sort of flexibility in work that families need, how am I gonna handle that? If I don't handle it, if my corporation is too rigid, I will lose the best people. And we see this happening in company after company after company. So this isn't an issue of being nice to women, doing special favors for women, anything like that. It's a strategic competitive issue. How do I get and keep the smartest people around? What I found in my studies of female entrepreneurs is that they are highly connected to sources of external advice and learning. There is an absolute correlation between involvement in external sources of advice and learning and business success. And the most successful businesses that I've studied run by women, all of those women either have mentors or they have boards, even if they're a private company, which so they don't have to have a board, but they do. They have advisors who can see things in a different perspective, offer them more context, and so on. I would say the key thing that women business owners appreciate is that the, every business must be smarter than its leader. And the leader must keep learning and growing. And great entrepreneurs and business leaders make it a point to formalize the routes by which they gain that learning on a permanent basis. Women are always listening quite hard not just to advice from formal mentors and so on, but they just listen hard to the noises around them. Um, there's an interesting observation, you know, there's more knowledge at the edge of an organization than in the center. Women reach very deep into their organizations to find out what's going on and what they need to worry about. Women take advice from everybody, and men just take advice from men. That's a weakness. It's just a weakness, because they aren't getting a full range of capabilities and insights. The other thing that I would say is that every time I've talked about my findings into, about women-owned businesses, and I've talked about my book, the men are incredibly receptive. And the reason they're so receptive is that there are many qualities of outstanding female leadership that they know they have in themselves, but they haven't given themselves permission to take it seriously or to use it to its full capacity. They definitely do something about it. I mean, it certainly makes them 
more attuned to many of their instincts. It makes them listen harder. It makes them think harder. It makes them take different kinds of data more seriously. It makes them track different kinds of data. So it really changes the perspective that they take on the world. And I would argue it makes them smarter because they're looking for more and different kinds of information.